During the Vietnam War, a number of ingenious, cruel, and devastating traps were employed by the North Vietnamese and Viet Cong forces. Unable to match the military capabilities of the United States, the North turned to rudimentary, effective, and utterly terrifying ways to incapacitate and kill enemy soldiers. In today's video, we will look into some of the types of traps used and the devastation they caused, and in some instances, still cause to this day. Perhaps the most infamous of the traps used is also one of the simplest. Punji sticks, that is bamboo sharpened to a point, were placed into pits. Rows of the sharp sticks were then hidden by a false floor, camouflaged to look like the jungle floor. These traps would be placed onto routes or paths where it was known that American forces would be travelling through. Upon stepping on the tarp or collection of sticks, an American soldier would fall and be impaled. Those that did not die instantly would no doubt scream in pain, alerting their enemy to their position. The injured soldier would be difficult to rescue, taking multiple soldiers out of action as they try to help their comrade. But this is not the end of the matter. Innovations to the spike traps were varied. In some instances, human or animal waste was smeared on the punji sticks, thereby greatly increasing the chances of a serious infection for the wounded man. In other instances, the punji sticks, rather than pointing upward, would be pointed at a downward angle. This would create a situation where once a person had entered the pit, it would be almost impossible to get out without impaling oneself. Some of the spike pits were elaborate, such as pits with rotating spike-covered logs or contraptions akin to bear traps. The latter would involve two planks of spiked wood that if stepped on would cause the leg to fall down and the spikes to impale as the trap was sprung. It wasn't just spikes that would be found in the pits, but also venomous snakes. The bamboo pit viper was commonly used, often hundreds at a time left for unwitting troops. A person falling into the pit would disturb the already agitated and hungry snakes, causing many to attack the unlucky soul. In fact, the bamboo pit viper became almost standard issue for the Viet Cong forces. The snakes were commonly used as a booby trap in Viet Cong's backpacks, as a mean to kill or injure those who dared to rummage through. These vipers were also used in the labyrinth network of underground tunnels used by the North Vietnamese forces and were often tied to the walls as a form of guard. Another simple and cheap to make trap was the mace. This would be made from either a wooden or dried mud ball with a number of spikes protruding. The mace would be suspended and held in place with a trip wire. Once triggered, the gravitational force would come crashing down onto the unsuspecting soldier. A similar device was the bamboo whip. Rather than using gravity, the bamboo whip exploited the tensile strength of bamboo. On one end of the bamboo pole would be a number of sharpened spikes. The trap would be held in place by a trip wire and could be placed at varying heights. At lower levels, the spike could impale and cripple a person's legs. At higher levels, the whip would be able to pierce a person's neck or chest. The benefits of such weapons is that they could be made using only what materials were found in the jungles. More conventional weapons were also employed, though some taking a rather different shape. The grenade in a can, as it sounds, involved two tin cans and usually two grenades. The safety pins on the grenades would be removed before being put into cans, in a way that would hold down the striker lever. A trip wire was then fastened to each grenade and the device placed along paths usually hidden in trees. When the wire was tripped, the grenades would be pulled out of the cans causing an instant detonation. Not only would the shrapnel from the grenades be sent flying, but so too would be the metal fragments from the tins. All manner of landmines were employed by the Viet Cong. One of the simplest and perhaps hardest to detect was the cartridge trap. It was in many ways similar to the pit traps, only far smaller, making it ever harder to spot. The cartridge trap would be formed by a single round of ammunition set with a nail underneath. The nail acted as a makeshift firing pin. A board would be placed over the hole, so that when stepped on, would cause the victim's foot to cause the bullet to fire. 
In many instances, the bullet would tear through the foot, disabling the soldier. If a larger caliber of bullet was used, it could be fatal. More conventional landmines were also used, supplied from the Viet Cong allies in China and the Soviet Union. But French-made mines from the earlier First Indochina War and repurposed American mines too were used. Such mines proved devastating against American forces, with around 64,000 soldiers killed or injured by landmines during the war. The effects of landmines, however, would last long after the war. Still to this day, mines planted by all sides kill indiscriminately. Between the landmines and other unexploded ordnance, over 100,000 casualties have been recorded, with around 35,000 killed. Then, there is the cost involved in removing landmines. It is relatively easy to plant a landmine. It is far more dangerous and costly to remove it. And the presence of Agent Orange residue in the soil means that uncovering the mines can sometimes result in exposure to the deadly agent. The Viet Cong and North Vietnamese forces had little hope in fighting a more conventional war against the United States. Vastly outgunned, the communist forces utilized all manner of traps to hinder the American forces. By crippling soldiers with brutal traps, the effect on morale and the resources expended in rescuing injured soldiers was how the Viet Cong could measure success. American soldiers had to be on constant alert for traps, many of which could only be detected by careful observation. It is estimated that around 11% of all deaths and 15% of all wounds to American soldiers were caused by such booby traps and mines, meaning that tens of thousands were affected. There is little doubt that war is hell, but the traps employed by the Viet Cong resonate, perhaps due to their rudimentary build and brutal effective methods of causing casualties. Whilst the massive bombing campaigns, deployment of toxic agents, and the widespread use of napalm are associated with American attempts at victory, so too do the variety of Viet Cong traps typify the cruelty of the Vietnam War. We do have a number of videos focusing on Vietnam, such as the effects of Agent Orange, the fate of Napalm Girl, along with other massacres that occurred. Be sure to check out the channel if you wish to learn more about this war.